Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles. And I am here today with another fun tutorial showing you how to make this beautiful journal. So this is a tall and skinny, and I'm, I think I'm calling it with layered pages because each of the pages is a different size. And it, um, I just think, gives it a really fun, fun look and design. So, um, the, I, you know, what, what else can I say? I like it. I did add a few flips, lots of pockets, um, words, pretty images, all kinds of things. So you can decorate these any way you like. This one was made using, um, papers by Pink Monarch Prints and the base pages are from the, um, Classics Collection number one. And then all, um, all the little goodies, pockets, decorations actually came from cutting up the gold kit for August 2024. So I just used the embellishments and the papers um, from that gold kit. These, you can subscribe and get, get their monthly papers um, or you can just buy them the ones you want in their Etsy shop. I'll link their shop for you. In the description, the one I'm going to make today is actually using papers from the August 2024 just regular kit. And I just think they're beautiful. And um, some of these do have a directionality. So I'm going to have to make sure I get my papers turned the right way. But I will have all of the measurements for you um, in the description so that um, you don't have to worry um, one if I misspeak or if um, you don't want to take notes or something. So to make a journal this size there are um, 16 pages so one two like you know eight and then the other half eight so that's 16. You don't need eight full-size pieces of paper five um, like copy paper size will work when you cut them up to have enough to make all of these layers. Um, I am using paper that I printed on both sides. If you don't have double-sided paper, that's okay. You can just decorate the white side or leave it for journaling or however you want to um, layer other paper on there. Um, easily this can be made using scrapbook paper paper pads those types of things so use what you have use what you like um that's what i'm doing i'm just using paper that i have and that i like so um the first piece of paper that you're going to need the largest piece is um nine inches tall by seven and a half inches wide. And let me just say this now, all of the pages are seven and a half inches wide for the size journal I'm making. So it's nine inches tall, seven and a half inches wide. Your next piece is, is just going to be one inch shorter. So now this one is eight inches tall by seven and a half wide, okay? And the way I am layering mine, um, I'm putting the tiny flap up top. So this one is seven by seven and a half. I think you guys get the picture, right? Six inches by seven and a half, five by seven and a half, four by seven and a half, and this one is three inches by seven and a half, all the way to this one, which is two inches by seven and a half, okay? So just cut all of your page papers to these sizes. And like I said, the way I did my journal is I did the tiny flip up top. You could have yours with the tiny flip at the bottom if you like that better. It's really just a personal preference, okay? Fold each of your pages in half. If your paper does have some directionality to it you'll want to pay attention to that and decide you know which pattern you want on the outside and which you want on the inside all right so those both have tiny print that does have a direction to them this one doesn't appear to have a direction and again I, I haven't really thought through which patterns I want um, 
on the outside and on, on the inside pages. <laughs> so um, just do whatever you like, whatever you think looks pretty and um, put them together. And if you're doing white, I would probably, if it were me, if one side of my paper is white or solid, I would probably put all of those on the inside. But that again is just me. It's up to you. Um, and these are those tiny little words again. So again, each of these I'm just folding in half to make all of my pages. Isn't that paper pretty? Okay, so it is a really easy fold. Don't have to worry about scoring right. This definitely has a direction to it. All right, do I want this or do I want that green showing? I think I want the green on the outside. All right, there we go. And if you um, turn them, you can get everything stacked good. Now, like whenever you um, put a signature together, sometimes the pages on the inside, because it just it takes up that space, right? They end up being a little bit wider. If you want to, now is the time to more easily trim those up. Do make sure all of your layers have stacked correctly. Mine, mine had not, <laughs> so that we're all together at the top here. So it looks like to me, if I take a little sliver off of the most inside piece, let me do that real quick and we'll see how it's looking. I'm just over at my guillotine cutter. I just took a sliver off and let's see how we're looking. It's easier to do one page at a time than try to hold this and chop the whole thing off. You know what, I think that's enough. Um, yeah, and you know, if, if it's bothering you and they're not exactly, you know, even, um, you can always open up your journal and carefully, you know, flip it and trim them off later. But um, my, mine came together pretty close. And it does get kind of chunky depending on what all you, you, you put in there. But I like that look. Okay, so once you get your papers the way you want them and you're feeling good about it, make sure they're all um, to the top. And again, like I said, of course, I'd have to flip my papers if I decided to have these at the bottom. But you can have it open either way. And, and the only reason I need to switch them is because I wouldn't want the words to be upside down. Now, I'm going to use a few paper clips to really hold this together nicely for me. Oh, you know what? Let me also, just so you guys can see when I'm stitching mine together, I'm going to ink this um, the inside page. So hopefully that will be easier for you to see. Um as we're working and let me go ahead and do the spine too and hopefully it will stand out a little bit better on camera for you um and you guys know me i love to ink distress ink everything so i'm sure i will later be going through and distress inking all of these pages if you like that look as well and you want to go ahead and do yours before you sew it together it's probably a little easier I'm just not gonna take the time right now on camera. I didn't I didn't do it before I got started and I don't wanna take a bunch of time inking all of these edges, but I definitely did that on this journal and I like how it looks. Okay, so just to help this stay together um, nice and securely, I am using my paper clips now. I want to be very careful when I am piercing the paper for the pamphlet stitch we're going to do. Um, because of how the papers are layered, I, you know, I can't just do like a three-hole pamphlet. They'll all wiggle around. Each of these layers needs to have several stitches in each layer. Otherwise, the pages will slip. Okay, and, and, and I've done that, and I'm like, whoops, that didn't work, and I had to go back. And so it may look like overkill that I have so many stitches instead of just like a three or five hole pamphlet stitch, but there, there was a reason, and it was just the design of all of these layers. So um, I just um, 
caution you there. If you think, oh, I don't have to do that many, um, it, it may not work. So, all right. I am, because it's just this one signature, I'm not going to make a template or anything. I mean, you could. You could use a piece of copy paper and get it all marked to know where you're going to poke your holes. But I'm not worrying about mine lining up in a larger journal. So I'm just going to use my ruler and I'm going to punch the holes. I'm actually going to put my ruler right above above the center line where I um, inked it for you guys to see because it's easier for me. I'm going to use the inches side and not the centimeters. So I know this is nine inches tall. So half of nine is four and a half. So I'm going to poke my first hole, get my center right at four and a half. And I'm not going all the way through. I'll do that in a minute after I get them all pierced. And I am going to poke a hole at every half inch. So I'm marking four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, and eight, all the way to eight and a half. So it's a lot of holes. And now I'm going to work back up the other way and put a hole at the four inch mark. Three and a half, three, <laughs> this fun, two and a half, two, one and a half, one, and at a half an inch. Okay, so again, I just put a hole at every half inch along um, that center. And now I, I know you guys can't see them. I kind of go by feel where the hole is. I am just carefully pushing each where I, I just kind of did a little bit of a prick, um, pushing it all the way through so it'll come all the way to the other side of my papers. And um, I think we end up with 15 holes this way. So it's one. Where is the next one? I lost it. All right, so at a half an inch, the one inch hole I just lost. And it's because it was right there in that really dark black <laughs> of the paper. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I haven't done that one yet. Eight. I'm just counting how many we're going to end up with. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, oops, 16, 17. We ended up with 17 holes. Math is not my strong suit. And I was careful in holding my papers together so they're nice and straight along that spine. All right, that's a lot of holes, which means quite a bit of sewing is in our future. It's not hard. Um, we just have to pay attention to what we're doing. So I find it easier to have a little extra string versus a, it being a little shorter and it's more difficult for me to get my needle through. So I cut my thread three times the length of the height of my paper. And it's a we end up trimming some off it ends up a little bit longer than what you need but like I said I just I find it a little bit easier than working with a shorter thread all right so go ahead and thread your needle you'll need a big eye needle and I'm using wax thread um, if you're interested in some of the supplies I use I'll have my Amazon storefront linked for you I am an affiliate with Amazon so I get a few pennies if you end up ordering something from one of my links but I don't share them for that purpose. Um, I only put things that I've really used or I like on there. And um, I hope it helps you. So that's that. Um, okay, so you do want to find your center hole, the one that was punched at four and a half inches. And we're going to start there. And we're going to go from the inside to the outside of our journal. And it doesn't matter which direction you choose to work. Um, just go to the next hole. So I'm actually working towards the bottom because of how I picked it up. Um, and go from the outside back in. And you're basically going to go do that. You're going to 
do like a, a running stitch, a straight stitch all the way down to the last hole. And then we will come back up so that your stitches end up all connected like that. So again, it's not hard. It's just, it's just a lot of holes, but it will hold all of our layers nice and secure and make our finished journal look really good. So again, inside to out and back until you get to that last hole at this end. So let me get there and we'll see. And I guess this is a good time to thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate y'all watching my videos and leaving me so many encouraging comments. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> if you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing that so you'll be notified when I have new videos come out. Okay, so I got all the way to the end, right? And now I'm just gonna work my way back up. So you're using a hole you've already used. You'll go back through. And this is where you just want to, again, make sure you've left your tail long enough. Look, make sure everything looks good on both sides because now's your chance to fix it if you skipped a hole or if it's not pulling together nice and snug for you. You, you don't want to over tighten it where it buckles your paper, but see how I've got that nice and snug? You just want to make sure it's nice and snug. And I hope that this is clear. I have other videos showing you how to do, you know, a three hole, I may have a five hole pamphlet stitch. Um, and a lot of other creators have videos on how to, you know, bind journals and signatures together. So you use whatever, you know, you prefer. But I did find for all of these layers that I did need quite a few. Um, okay, so when you get all the way back up and now here we're on that center hole, we're going to skip the center hole, okay? And we're going to go to the next hole. And that is so that at the end, when we work our way back up, we'll end up here in the middle. So you're, you're working your way up. And then when you're ready to... Um, when naturally you would have gone back through the center hole, skip it and go to the next one and through to the back, okay? If you don't do that, it's not the end of the world. It'll still work. You'll just end up um, tying your journal together with the, the strings not at the same hole, and, and that's okay. You just want to make sure you get it nice and snug, so... Don't panic, or you can pull your string out and do it again. That always works too. <laughs> Keep your paper clips on so that if you have to do that, your papers don't move around on you. All right, I'm working my way all the way up to the top. And I was I was happy when I shared this um, little journal. I did a, a quick little short video telling you guys I was working on this um, tutorial, which I was. I was printing all the papers and cutting out all the pretty little things that I'm going to decorate this one with. Um, but I was glad to see you guys were excited about it. Um, it's it's a, a fun project. Um, I was having trouble seeing that hole again where the font of the, that D was so dark. Um, I was glad you guys were excited and liked it. Um, I haven't done one with these layers like this before, so I'm not not saying I've um, that I created it. Someone else may have done one like this in the past, but I was just playing with my papers, and I kind of wanted to see all of the pretty patterns and came up with this idea. So hopefully you guys like it too. And, you know, you could do fewer pages like you know even if you just did um you know to this layer that would still look really really cool so lots of lots of flexibility all right working my way back to the middle we're almost done stitching and I don't know if you guys have noticed I tend to use my mat to help push my needle through sometimes if it's a little hard for me to get it through I just find it's easier on my hands to do it that way. And let's hope that I counted correctly 
and we're going to end up where we want to be. All right, so now you'll see we're going back to the outside. Yep, and our last stitch will bring us up through that center hole where our tail is. And this is where you just, like when we do other types of pamphlet stitches, you want to make sure your strings are on either side of this stitch. So I have one on this side and one on this side underneath. They're both underneath. I'm double checking, everything looks good. And I'm gonna tie a knot and another knot. And then I usually just switch hands and tie a third time. I don't know if that really helps and locks it in or not, I'm not sure. And my tails aren't, actually they're not too long. So um, you can cut them shorter, you can tie a bow, you can add some dangles, you got lots of choices of what you wanna do with those. So I usually just leave them for the time being until I decide. Now whenever I sew a signature together, whether it's a little journal like this or um, it's in a larger journal, I just like to go through and with my fingers, if you want, you could use a bone folder and really crease down each page and get it used, used to being together. And this is also where you can just make sure you didn't like slip a stitch or anything um, or miss a page somehow. And again, with paper like this um, or scrapbook paper, when it's all basically the same texture and feel, they don't usually slip out, but sometimes when I'm using like papers of all different sizes and textures, sometimes they do, so. Okay. And again, I realized that I cut that one a little small for how it looks. So I may at some point go back and trim, trim all of this up so it is perfectly even, um, but I'm not gonna worry about it right this second. Um, it's just that one since I did that inside layer so it wouldn't stick out. I did, it was a little, a little ambitious. So now it makes the other pages look a little long. But it's okay. I can also add a layer on here if I wanted to, like a little strip of paper um, and, and bring it out that way. So I have choices, but I'm gonna leave it for right now. All right, so that's the construction of the journal. Um, super easy and fun. I am going to now um, just spend a little time. We won't. I, I won't decorate the whole thing, but um, we'll do a few, a, a few decorations together. And if you want to do some little flip outs, you could do that too. That'll be fun. So I did spend quite a bit of time um, this morning cutting a bunch of the little pieces from the August um, journal kit. And this isn't even all of them, y'all. Wow, it's just amazing, I think, sometimes how many pieces really do come in these kits. And that's one of the reasons I love them so much is you can always, always find something fun. Um, this is from a different kit. Fun to, um, to decorate with and it all kind of coordinates and is in similar papers. Um, I also have a few that's from that classics collection. A, a few more of the papers to be able to, um, like I said, make a few flips if we want to. We could also use some of the pockets to do that. So um, a lot of times people do want to see how I how I choose to extend the pages or do flips. So let's do a couple of those first. <laughs> I can't believe I have all these little bits and bobs to play with. Okay, so. Um, the, the flips do better on some of the little bit larger pages. Um, you have a little more to work with, um, a little more real estate. Um, it looks like this is the five, yeah, this is the five inch sheet and this is a, a five inch, so it's the exact height there. So that might be fun to do a flip the same height or we can do it on one of the other pages. I think I'm gonna do that. I know this one is six inches long. I'm gonna make the flip approximately five inches so it'll just kind of nestle in there. 
Yeah, I want a little less than five. Okay, so just like I do with other flips, you know, does, we can decide, do we want um, to do a hinge? So it's like this, and you get to this page and it flips open. Do we want to wrap it around the edge of the paper? You know, how do we want to do that? And I'm going to just, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I just pick, picked, I just picked a place to fold that page, but this one is five by four and three quarters, and I folded it right at one and a half inches, and I'm going to wrap it around the edge of this page. And again, normally, you guys know me, I'd be inking everything, right? I'd be inking all of my edges, but because we're on camera and I don't want to spend a lot of time inking, I will skip that for now. But if you want to ink yours before you start gluing things in, I, I recommend that. So this is going to be cute. It'll kind of reinforce this edge of this page, and then we'll have a nice little flip. This paper... Um, I don't think I trimmed the best because that white um, strip was part of the strip. Um, I think I'm just gonna, so it doesn't stand out quite so much, I will go ahead and add just a little bit of ink to it. Okay, so that when we open it up, we don't see the bright white in there. Yeah, I like that better. Okay. And then you decide where you want it on the page. I'm gonna try, basically center mine, I'll hold it very securely, and I am going to add glue. Now, we have a choice. We can make this into a tuck spot or I can glue it all the way down. I'm gonna make it into a tuck spot, so I am gonna run a bead of glue. If I can get my glue to come out, come on glue. Um, I'm gonna run a bead of glue right along the Get it unclogged. It doesn't clog up very often. Right along um, the crease to give this some more structure. If I only put glue on these two sides, because I'm not going to glue the flip on the other side, I'd be a little worried about this. So now I know it's nice and secure. I have a flip on this side. And now I have a little pocket here that we can tuck things in. Okay, how cute. All right, so I tend to then go to the center and we'll do a flip on this half of the journal as well. I'm gonna pick a different page to put it on though. We're gonna go to one of the smaller pages. Um, in fact, we may do a um, a skinny flip, what I consider a skinny flip. This is the exact same height as my page, five inches. So I'm gonna take the tiniest of sliver off of there just to make it fit on here a little bit better. And I'm gonna make a little tiny hinge. So the hinge on this one is almost half an inch. And we're gonna do it the same way Except when you get to this page, this one's going to open out like this. And I'm going to glue this all the way down. This isn't really big enough to make into any kind of pocket or tuck spot. And I can then, on this page, collage, add a piece of more neutral journaling paper, whatever I feel like doing on this side. And now I have a flip here. And of course, we can do pockets, whatever we want. I just wanted to get a couple of flips in the journal because I think they're cute. Now, the other thing with these little tiny pieces, I printed this, um, I don't know if I mentioned that, on 90-pound cardstock. It's so it it's not super, super thick, but it's it's not super flimsy either, right? It's a good weight. But I usually will look for something that I can put at least on one side or the other a corner to help reinforce it just a little bit. It's so like this pocket is a little bit too big, but I love that butterfly. So I know this piece is two inches tall. So I'm gonna just trim this little pocket to two inches. 
And now when I glue this, I'm gonna go just a smidge, just a smidge, literally just a tiny smidge under two. And when I glue this on here to decorate, it's gonna reinforce um, this, this page. And I'll need to do it on this side too. Only because I think that little flap is a little vulnerable. So I did that on this one. So I put that nice square there and I think it's protecting it some. That's just me. I'm gonna put it on the inside, even though I loved that butterfly. With this little label here, it feels like it needs to be centered. Oh, you know what though? Why don't I center it? We'll add a little label or tag to go with that. And then we can also put a piece on this side. I think it'll be just fine. And I do like that butterfly right there on the, the front of the cover. And this little, this little tiny two inch page ends up kind of being the, the main focus of our cover. So very cute. And we could even put a word right here, couldn't we? How about we'll grab reflect. I'm not gonna overthink this y'all. Okay. So um, while I'm doing this, I'll chat a little bit. Um, if y'all have been watching my videos in order or in real time, you'll know that I shared with you recently, you know, my daughter's um, starting her new job. Today's her first day. I'm eagerly awaiting a, an update. I'm just gonna go ahead and cover up that green block there because I think it looks better. Um, I'm eagerly awaiting an update. I'm trying not to um, pester her though because it is her first day and you know you don't want your mom texting you right when you're at work on your first day so but she did promise when her day is over and that won't be until 5 30 <laughs> um and then she'll have her commute back over to the city but um she should be able to text with her mom when she's um on the bus uh I'll get to hear about it. So anyway, I'm excited. I'm sending her all the good, the good luck vibes. By the time you guys watch this video, first day will long be over because I probably won't get this one up for several, at least a couple of days, maybe tomorrow. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of the big news going on. And of course, and my son's still waiting to hear about his job. So those are kind of the, the kid updates right now. Our youngest, we are moving her back to college. I'm going to trim this down to go on this corner. Um, we're moving her back to college. When? Let me say, uh, not this coming weekend, but the next weekend. So, um, We'll, we'll be w without our kiddos again. Um, we have all the ones that live here in town, though. So I think we'll, we'll still be busy. Everything will be fine. But Sarah and Julie, the two youngest, Sarah's now in New York, and Julie will be back at college. So, all right. This one had been like a little label, and it had those kind of little rounded corners. I'm just inking it to mask that just a little bit. I do like that little vintage typewriter, though. Oh, wait. I didn't cut it small enough. It needs to be only two inches wide. And I did not trim it down enough. Okay, so the fun part of these types of journals, I think really are all of the different embellishments and the decorations. And just let your imagination, you know, go wild. I do a lot of pockets, a lot of tuck spots, just because I like all the extra pieces of ephemera and again when you're working with um, one of these kits I did not organize everything I cut out there's lots to tuck in the pockets right but there's actually quite a few pockets and everything come with the kit so I can take a minute and dig through there's a bunch of these that can be used as is or um, to stack like isn't that cute I think this may have been meant to be part of um, some waterfall angled pockets I haven't watched thoroughly all of the videos showing um, some of the different fun things you can make with the kit you guys also know I like to just kind of take the papers and do my own thing too not that there's anything wrong with the planned projects because they're fabulous but I just like to get creative myself. Okay, I found a few things that I can use either for pockets or tuck spots. 
You guys just gotta love the mess I've made here. It's actually making me a little, here's one, a little crazy. I wish I had organized these into piles like pockets, tags, labels, but I didn't. Hindsight, right? This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this ruler and we're just gonna smidge all those up there. Now, there are also all these cute little tabs and I didn't put tabs on this, this original one, but that might be cute. I'll, I'll give that some thought. We might do some tabs at some point. All right, so let's see. The width of these are perfect. I did not plan that. I just got super lucky. So they may need to be trimmed just a smidge, um, just a smidge so that they don't hang over. It seems a little large, this one, um, or deep for these smaller pages. So I think I'm going to just jump around and go to some of the larger pages. I, I will encourage you to really look, though, like if I'm going to use this one, see, see how it impacts um, the view of the front of the journal and same thing when we're working on the back you know we'll just want to make sure at least we're aware that if I choose to install this pocket down here I'm now going to see this paper instead of this paper and I am okay with that um I am going to trim it off I'm not going to ink all the edges I decided to ink that one simply because it'll be harder to do once it's glued together. The, the outside edges are easy to do whenever. Okay, so now that really does fit in there well. If you don't have a kit that has a bunch of pockets, um, you can make your own. Um, you can cut papers into squares and then cut them on a diagonal. You could make yourself, again, This you could start this out as a square and then get the angle that you want and then use it as a template and, and make a bunch of them and then you'll have them, right? So, you know, don't, don't get discouraged um, if you don't have a paper kit that has all of these little pieces that just makes it super easy, make your own. And like I said, I printed and have some of the extra pages um, simply because I want to make some of my own, which we'll do too. I kind of wanted to see that butterfly, but it's not really, it's not really poking all the way through, but I'm gonna glue it on anyway. We'll see a partial butterfly on the front. Bring it all the way down. Let's see. Yeah, you get a hint of a butterfly. <laughs> I like that. And it'll kind of impact, you know, like I said, I'll try to pay attention on each of these as I decorate to decide. But um, super easy then to just start tucking things inside. I don't think I want to cover up this page too much. So we may, um, we may try to put, how about just one of these taller pockets um, on the other side. And I'm not, I'm not sure what I'll do. Maybe I'll put a tab on this one or just a word because I just love that, that design of that paper. So I think at the height with these tall and skinnies, I also have done, um, I guess the idea is sort of like a belly band, but then um, just let me think of what I'm trying to say here. Let's see if we were on, for example, this page and I could do a belly band. I could cut like, you know, a one and a half, two inch strip and we could install it. But we could also in install, instead of just putting glue here and here, I could make it into two slots or even a, a horizontal load pocket. So lots of options there. Um, I keep dropping things. Uh, to to make the pockets look really nice. So this is also where you guys that are following my series of junk journal ideas, this is where when you've got a project like this sitting in front of you and you're like, oh goodness, you know, what do I want to do? It would be great to pull out your idea book and go, oh, I could do a hidden journaling spot here. Or, oh, I could do a gatefold um, on this page. And it just really helps your, the juices flow when you're creating. So I encourage you guys to do that and to think that through. 
I am going to use this paper um, to make two uh, diagonal pockets um, for the inside, the center fold. So I need to take off about a quarter of an inch. Yep. All right. And then I'm going to cut this in half. I'll give you the measurements here in a second. Let's see. We'll end up with two pieces or one piece. We'll start off with one. Three and a half. It's three and a half inches wide by five inches tall. And I am going to cut it on a diagonal and then use this for the two pockets. And this is kind of what I meant by make your own pockets if you don't have them. Now, because I want them both in the same paper, that's why I said I need two, two rectangles so I can now get a pocket running this direction. Another idea is I could install my triangles this way and have a pocket and then a tuck spot. Why don't I do that just to be different? But if you want to have your second pocket and you want it to match, just now cut this piece of paper in this direction and then you'll have two green ones, okay? But I'm gonna install it this way. So again, I'm just gonna worry about inking the part of the pocket that'll be hard for me to get to once it's glued down. I think that'll look really smart. Really smart and sassy, okay. So I was talking to my husband last night. Um, we're watching um, a show on TV um, that's pretty intense. I don't know if you guys have watched it. Um, Wentworth, it's about women in pr prison in Australia. And it's not for the faint of heart. So if you have issue with um, cursing or um, violence, uh, that type of thing, female sexuality. It's probably not the show for you. Um, it's sometimes a little difficult to watch. But um, what we were talking about is how different like British English or Australian English is from, from the English we speak and the words that they use. And one of them that they say all the time is reckon. So I reckon she's going to Da, 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 or I reckon this pocket is going to work. And it's so funny because it definitely emphasizes like what you watch and what you read and what you think about it really pops up because I almost used that term and it's not one that I would normally ever use. So I guess now I'm admitting that I'm watching a little too much um, TV sometimes with my husband. And we're watching it on Netflix. <laughs> I wouldn't say too much. We have fun. We watch a show each night usually, um, unless we have other things going on, but it's fun. Okay, so then this one will tuck in right there. And I do like, I kinda don't wanna cover up his face though. So we may put him in a different pocket and I'll put a different type of tag up here. How about that, that tall one? Um, with all of these wonderful doodads and labels, we can also, um, decorate the actual pockets too. Isn't that cute? So this one, I haven't chopped off or rounded the corners, but I'm going to, I'm gonna use my corner rounder. I could do it with my scissors, but this is easy. How cute. It looks like a little briefcase, I think. Okay. All right, very sweet. And again, um, ink, don't ink. Add labels, add decorations. It's totally up to you. I'm trying to think if there's anything else kind of unique that I did in this one that I wanted to show you. One thing is I did use some of the pieces that are approximately this size, and I made them into tuck spots. So like this one, I'll leave open on the side. And now a small piece of ephemera, once I let this dry, can fit in here. And um, 
look how cute, right? And I could put a ribbon or a little topper, or we could add um, one of these tiny labels on there to make it look really cute. So again, get creative when you are decorating the pages and decide, you know, do I want another pocket? Do I want another little tuck spot? You know, would that look good? Um, because how cute is that? Let me pull this out and we'll put this little label on here. So we'll have a little number popping out. Very sweet. And of course this one has a little tiny bird on it too. So isn't that cute? The little bird. All right, and I'm sure I will go back through later and ink a bunch of these. <laughs> Okay, so you just, you keep going, you keep going. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that was kind of different or unique. I did um, just simple straight pockets. Um, these were like little file folder things. This, I just layered the paper to make it look nice. Um, if you if you want on yours, if you want writing space or extra writing space, you know, put a more neutral paper. Um, that's kind of what I did with these. Is I figure I can then write on this side, um, and and actually see the see the print. So, so many fun options. All right, I'm gonna stop there. Um, obviously I have a long way to go to decorate this one and to make it look fabulous, but I will enjoy doing that. Um, and I hope you guys have fun making one too. If you're on social media, make sure we've connected so that I can see your creations as well. If you share, um, I'd love to see what you're making. So have a great day, everybody. Thanks again for all your support. Give me a thumbs up until next time.